When you're playing Miles Morales, you're doing a lot of physicality. So whether it's on the mocap stage, I'm giving my all, or whether it's in the booth, I'm actually swinging, I'm actually punching, and I'm actually doing all the motions that are required into Miles. When you hear all those hard breaths and, and tones in the game, those are real. Hey, what's going on, you guys? I'm Najee Jeter, and this is how I became Miles Morales in Marvel Spider-Man. character Miles Morales came about in my life and I want to say 2017 but I was maybe around 19 18 years old playing Miles as a 13 year old on Disney XD it's me friendly neighborhood spider-man PlayStation called me over saying hey we're doing a reading for spider-man do you want to joined and I said, heck yeah. I want to say it wasn't too long of an audition. We had fun. It was uh, Yuri and I. I believe it was the reveal, me telling him something is changing and me not knowing that my man Pete already had the same situation going on. He kind of came at it as a big bro, thought it was puberty. All starts in the pituitary gland. Nope, nope, mm -mm, mm -mm. no, <laughs> that's not what I'm talking What's so crazy, Yuri was actually on that TV show with me uh, on Disney XD. Well, the relationship between Pete and Miles, man, it's a heartfelt one, because that's big bro, and he's big bro on and off camera. He kind of guides me with just advice and just acting skills that he has incorporated for Pete to have with the Spider-Man in Miles. My performance in video games, uh, man, starting off with The Last of Us, I was a kid. Playing Sam, I was maybe like 13 or 14. Stepping into the mocap world as a kid, that was shocking. What if they're trapped in there without any control of their body? I'm scared of that happening to me. Remember when they uh, flew me to Serbia and they had to scan my face, I, I kind of felt like, okay, this is gonna be it's gonna be something different. Getting your face scan is crazy. You know, you're sitting in a, a chair and you have maybe like 90 cameras around you in a sphere. You're just sitting there and then you're just, they're flashing away and you're making different, different facial expressions here and there. So that, going through that was mind blowing. Thank you was right. The friend picked up a signal from this satellite. Let's see what we're working with. Miles is way smarter than me, I'll tell you that. Miles is a tech genius and he knows what he's doing when it comes to the science and the arts. So man, Miles is ahead of his time when it comes to his mentality. Miles and I have a strong similar connection of our background. Just little situations that we go through. He's lost his father, I was raised by a single mom. Just took from my personal experiences when it came to emotion and losses that he, you know, he has to go through. I'm also Jamaican. His culture background too, you know, with his mom and is amazing. So, and I shout out to Jackie. I love you, mama. When you're playing Miles Morales, you're doing a lot of physicality. So whether it's on the mocap stage, I'm giving my all, or whether it's in the booth, I'm actually swinging, I'm actually punching, and I'm actually doing all the motions that are required into Miles. When you hear all those hard breaths and, and tones in the game, those are real. <laughs> For the training of Miles, we had a pamphlet that we had to go through, and it was of different poses. You had the aggro pose, you had the idle pose, and then you had uh, the perch pose. They gave me some homework, and I went home with it and tried to do all the stretches that I could possible. But um, we have a great stunt team as well, because you know when you have a camera attached to your face, it's only so much you can do. So we did do a couple of flips and uh, some some tricks at the uh, parkour studios. Couldn't go too much, too much with it with the camera attached to your face, but it's fun, man. When you when you really get into it, you get to be a big kid again. The script for an open world is, you know, like a typical film script. We don't really change too much. We try to keep everything just, you know, straightforward. We do a full table read when we first start and then we kind of jump into it. We have our cinematic scenes where we are doing the physicality in it and we're acting it out. We have our tables, we have our chairs, we have our cars, and we have the open world. And then we get in the booth and we track some of those scenes or we add on to certain things that have been filmed already. Well, I'm a sound effects guy, you know? I need my sounds, I need my imagination to be on point. So they kind of laugh at me on set because when we're doing mocap and when we're in the volume, I'm making the web sounds when I shoot. 
you know, I'm doing all that. I'm going full blown. But when we're in the booth, we kind of have to switch that up and just do the motion. We kind of have to get the joints and how you are running. You know, when you're talking and running, you're in a whole different pace of tone and 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 your breath. So we kind of try to focus on on getting that element of just the breathing, you know, in the booth. We have fun on set, man. They gave me a lot of leverage. They let me know, like, hey, this is something that you can do, this is something that you can't. Essentially, like I said, we have a camera attached to our face. So if that camera breaks, whole scene is done. Cinematics over. So our cinematic days, oh man, those are amazing because we have we have nothing but fun eight to five in the volume on set. We have our crew, we have our cast. We're all in our suits, walking around looking like complete aliens. We have our stunt team on there and they make us look amazing too. Any of the crying scenes, oh man, any of the emotional scenes get crazy. Is everyone okay? We kind of go method and we take our time, people give us our space. So if I see somebody needs to have that emotional impact, I'll let them you know, get there. I'm typically in a trailer getting my head right, going out and giving 100%. You could have died. When I read that Miles was fighting Venom, I was like, damn! I know Venom's background. We kind of all have a Venom in us, and we all have that inner voice, so fighting that inner voice and fighting that being was kind of like a fight with yourself. Fighting Venom was crazy. I think the day we met Tony Todd, that day was like surreal, because we were like, okay, this is actually happening. He had on some Jordans, and I was like, how does he have on Jordans with a mocap suit? Meeting the OG, meeting the, the, the guy behind, you know, Venom, man, people are gonna go crazy for this. So everyone always tends to ask, do the Miles voice. Super stressed about my college essay. Pete's busy doing other stuff. Really the Miles voice is really just a couple of octaves higher and just as a kid. Getting into his his youthfulness is is the number one thing to do. So yeah, I'm drinking some teas, man. I'm drinking some energy juice. Um, I'm making sure I'm eating good in the morning. I got a hearty breakfast. Kind of just thinking about my 16 year old self and where I was at mentally with that and just going through the changes of my voice. But the dope thing about Miles now is he's coming into college. So he's a college boy now and he's coming into his own as a young man so they're letting my natural voice come into play now miles sits uh with his chest out all the time you know miles has a little you know more stocky appearance it is definitely 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 a change in in body movement you know miles has has a youthful steez about him that um he's growing up with and then being around pete you have to know how to come into the reality of just being a regular human being. When it comes to Spider-Man, he's a, not a boy anymore. He's running on walls, he's jumping off walls, so he tends to move 10 times different when he gets from reality into Spider-Man. I wanna say the day I felt like Spider-Man was the day we had to say I'm New York's only Spider-Man. We had to build a set where, you know, it was on the edge of a building. So they typically, you know, built up uh, a huge, you know, rigged of tables and poles and put them together and made it like a huge cliff. I got up on stage, I'm high up. I'm maybe like 10 feet from, you know, the, the floor. And that's when we had to have that hero pose, stick your chest out and have that idol pose and say, I'm New York's only Spider-Man. I'm New York's only Spider-Man. And that was the day I was like, wow, yeah, this is, this is really happening. Like, people are gonna hear my voice say this, they're gonna see my face say this. My grandkids and kids, they're gonna, you know, know their, their granddad was, was Spider-Man. Being a Spider-Man is kind of just overcoming your emotions, your pain, and, and the struggles that, that life brings you and becoming your own superhero. Because everyone goes through a typical struggle, but once you've overcome that struggle and that pain in life, you become a Spider-Man. What is it like for me to wear the mask? It's like a sense of bringing out that inner God in you, just being that loving person and being the do what's right type of guy. We all have been through struggles and pains and we've all had losses and just emotions that we've had to deal with our whole life. So when we overcome it, 
You know, I think that's the slip on the mask. I've gotten kids coming up to me crying, just in full happiness, tears of joy, letting me know what they've been through with Miles. Because we were in the middle of, of a crisis in the world while, while we were filming Miles and when Miles dropped. So it brought a lot of people through a lot of things. And I'm just grateful and forever thankful for that, man, that I could be that person to do that for them. Just having that connection with just being this superhero, having that love for the community, you know, kind of changes everything. Number one thing is that anyone can wear the mask. And I know that sounds like a cliche, but no, it is, it is great power and great responsibility once you realize who you are and what you have to fight through and what the world brings. So that's all what Spider-Man is, is fighting through your pain, fighting through the emotion and overcoming and becoming that hero in your family, you know, in your school, you know, in your surroundings. Find that inner God in you.